Italy's vision, um, well, step back from that, um, if one can uh, look at two big visions for the future of Europe, uh, let's for shorthand call them the Juncker vision, uh, in which uh, essentially we move towards closer integration and everyone is in everything, uh, and the Macron vision, uh, in which there will be groups of member states that will opt for closer integration. I would say Italy's vision falls probably more in the Macron camp than in the Juncker uh, camp. Uh, and it does because on the one hand, Italy is and remains strongly attached to the concept of enlargement. And for instance, it continues to support very strongly the enlargement, particularly to the Western Balkan countries. Uh, but on the other hand, it remains a strongly federalist EU member state. Uh, and therefore, you know, it goes back to this widening versus deepening uh, debate. Uh, and it therefore looks at integration, deeper integration, probably taking place between a s sort of group, a subset uh, of EU member states. I would say that Italians, uh, the Italian elites uh, would definitely prefer the option of a multi-speed or multi-level, uh, more differentiated union. And it goes back to this uh, attachment that Italy has to a more uh, integrated federal political core, uh, but allowing for other member states that may have other preferences uh, to do their thing. Uh, and sort of a sort of live and let live approach to European integration. When it comes to the Europe, to the Italian public, well, there the real challenge is for them not to support uh, a Europe doing less scenario, uh, which of course is a risk in Italy because Euroscepticism has never been so high in the country. I mean, this is traditionally a, a very pro-European, Europhile country, and now you have, I mean, in, in the Institute, in IAI, uh, we recently conducted a survey uh, and approximately 37% uh, would support an exit, for instance, from the euro. Now, it's far from being a majority, but from a member state like Italy that has traditionally been so strongly attached to European integration, it's definitely a worrying uh, percentage. I would say definitely two. Uh, the first is a completion of the construction of the Eurozone uh, and particularly moving towards not only a finalization of the banking union, uh, but also moving towards what is known as a fiscal uh, union. Uh, and then more uh, solidarity when it comes to migration and moving towards and beyond, I would say, the uh, aspect of resettlement and relocation when it comes to uh, asylum, but moving towards a more integrated common asylum policy and common migration policy. Well, I would say that Italy has um, unfortunately forgotten, uh, has a sort of momentary phase, not momentary, it's been going on for 20 years, a uh, phase of uh, amnesia, uh, about what its traditional role in European integration was. And its traditional role in European integration was really that of uh, forging different coalitions and different alliances across different policy areas with different member states. And it's since then, particularly during the Berlusconi period, but unfortunately even during the Renzi period, um, had a, a sort of a slightly, a slight obsession of wanting to simply sit at the top table with the French and the Germans. And of course that's perfectly legitimate, but, but of course there are all sorts of areas in which actually you need to work with other member states. Uh, and I think that is something that Italians have not sufficiently done, and I think there is great scope for them to do so. Uh, let's take this question of Ireland and, uh, and Italy. If you think about areas such as migration, for example, uh, support for multilateralism, support for the United Nations, the peace and security agenda, I think these are all areas of foreign policy, of migration policy, on which actually the two countries could be far more aligned working together. It needs to translate more uh, aspirations and positions into concrete policies and, and practices. Um, and fortunately, because our political system is at the moment so dysfunctional in many respects, um, 
often what are good positions, you know, Italy is in favor of European defense and European defense cooperation, and, and the, the, the positions are all there, and it's all fine. But then when push comes to shove, or rather when the position actually becomes policy, and it becomes policy because of the reignition of the Franco-German engine, particularly when it comes to the story about European defense, well, the Nifi has been taking a step back, uh, or rather, not so much a step back, but certainly not a step forward. It's kind of stayed where it is. And the reason being that it has not actually articulated what the policy, you know, what comes after the position. Uh, and I think that's basically the product of a political system which at the moment is very inward looking, not least because of election coming up uh, probably in March next year.